Hello everyone and welcome to Pulford Weekly, your weekly EastEnders podcast where this week we'll be discussing the episodes released on the BBC in the UK from Monday the 21st to Friday the 25th of February 2022. And what a week it's been, what a remarkable week it's been, an exciting week and much, much to discuss, but I cannot discuss it on my own, I cannot. That's why I've roped Rob in. Hello Rob, how are you? Hello Alex, how are you this week? I'm very excited. What a week! What a week it's been! I loved this week. It's I'm yes, very excited. Very excited indeed. Yes, it's been a really good week, a really gripping week. Um a real mm. turnaround from last week, let's just say. Um and something we also have to uh celebrate but also um be a bit sad about because this was the final ever week that they recorded on the original yeah. Albert Square set. My goodness, didn't it do well for 37 years? Honestly. 37 years they used that set. It a looks set that good was on it. only bought, uh, built, and it looks good on it, and it was only meant to be built and used for five. And and, and look at it. Mm. it. Look at it. It's it's a thing of beauty. Amazing. And honestly, if they if, if this was the last time that we ever saw that set, some of the shots we were getting this week, especially the night, oh, it looked amazing this week. The square looked fit this week, I thought. I honestly, I, I thought, it, honestly, that it visually did. everything was great this week and the square looked awesome. So that square has done us some service over the years. Many moments of TV iconic history were filmed on, were filmed on that set. And hopefully we are due for many more on the new set. So do you know what's going to happen then with, with, with the set? Like, are we going to be, is it literally nothing, nothing else? we're going to see on the old set whatsoever and it's now just all new set from next week sadly it looks that way it looks like it's just going to be deconstructed and i guess they've then got space for building something new perhaps i'm not really very sure actually um i mean we'll be discussing a bit later on on i want to gossip about the uh schedule changes and perhaps that could be something that might link to what they may do with the new set but yeah like you i would like them to open it up i would like them to kind of let people go in have a bit of a roam around you know open up some tours it's a nice way of making some money back considering that they people have been complaining so much about the new set costing so much yeah but um as i said before i have to say that considering that set lasted for what say 37 years to build a new set really if you kind of break it down it's really not that much of a cost to have a new set built after that long so um really i'm not. not quite so on the daily mail big. ban the bbc bandwagon no. to be perfectly honest with you no no me neither i think that set's done great service and like you say it's totally paid for itself and the new set will pay for itself you know how much do you think it costs to make a set that big we're not just talking about like some random yeah. little outdoor scene that can be moved away after they finish filming, you know, just wheel it off. It's an entire, like people could technically live there. It's big. It, they've basically created a whole industrial area. So a hundred thousand pounds for all mm-hmm. of that. Bargain, I say bargain. So I'm yeah, really looking forward to, I'm actually bargain. really looking forward to seeing the new set. <laughs> And if, and if stuff is noticeable, so bring it on. But what an exciting moment, actually, genuinely. I, I like it Absolutely. when stuff like this happens. It feels like Absolutely. quite an iconic, exciting moment. But thank you very much. To, I was talking to an inanimate object, but thank you very much to the old set. And you went out in style this week, I thought. So, and talking yeah, of this yeah. week. Yeah, I mean, as, oh, as, what a week. That's right. As you alluded to, what a week. And as you alluded to, it went out in style. Some, I, I mean, we, before we started the podcast, uh, we both said how the square looks so lovely at night. And there were so mm. many night scenes, I external night, night scenes this week, which were really beneficial. So it was a real, I really think it was a really nice little nod goodbye to, uh, mm. the, the, the old set. The new set is coming. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've under good authority, there's a few surprises coming onto the new set as well. So that'd be really Ooh. exciting to see. But as you say, as you say, we have got a week to talk about. And we're going to start off yes. with Kim, who has been given a bill for Old Pearl's <laughs> schooling fee. I don't know why I said Old Pearl. It just sounded right at the time in my head. Old Pearl. Uh, and it's quite expensive. She can't really afford it. Um, but she's got a plan because she went to speak to the governors or the headmistress of the school. And she said that if you can, if you can put in a good impression, perhaps a scholarship might be proposed for Pearl going forward. So Kim now has to get herself up together. A legally blonde style audition video is what she's aiming for. And she's aiming to do that with Howie. Um, Again, there's a relationship yeah. brewing, I think, between Howie and Kim this week, I think, was the main uh, tone that we were meant to get from this. So <laughs> how do you feel moving forward? Yes. With this? 
Well, um, yes, because um, Kim is clearly, uh, we're in this stage, aren't we, at the moment, where one character fancies another, and she probably fancies him underneath it all, but she's just sort of brushing those feelings aside. And also, she seems to be under the impression that Harvey, um, that Howie is gay, purely because he wears a penguin outfit. Now, <laughs> I... I don't really know what I mean. I I I've met some. I I will be honest. I have my I have my stories to tell, which I can't tell on this podcast. It's a family. It's a it's a family podcast. So I have. I but you know you. I've told you the story that of what I refer to. So we can't definitely go yes. there. But I'm not. Uh, I have an archive. I'm not. Of these I'm not stories, really so aware. One day, kids. One day. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> I uh, better never annoy this bloke, I tell you. Um, but yeah, so I thought that was quite a, a, a they amused me, to put it like that. It's a very strange thing to say, though. He, he's gay, he must be gay. He owns a penguin outfit. Yeah. Very odd. Um, but he's a gay I, penguin. I don't know if Howie's around. <laughs> the gay penguin. They all exist. Trust me, they exist. And um, I don't know if Howie's staying around, though, because, and this is a very geeky thing to say, but you remember when Jada moved onto the square? She got, found herself thrust upon, you know, all the further up the credits, you know, as in, like, where all the other characters go. Um, how he hasn't had that happen to him yet. He's still at the bottom. <laughs> and they tend to reserve that oh, for right. the guest characters, don't they? So I don't know if how he's around to stay, in all honesty. Mm. As soon as they move him up, then you know that, you know he's there to stay. But I, I'm, I'm not convinced yet. Um, I mean, I like him. I like Kim and Harvey together. I think he's got that level of, he's got that level of comic about him that could bounce off Kim quite nicely. Cause Kim was in full flow this week. Um, my favourite Kim moment of the week was when she nearly decapitated Cat with her handbag. Quite enjoyed that when she, when she left with flats. <laughs> yeah. I, I enjoyed Plung that. Flung over her shoulder. <laughs> Flung over her shoulder and nearly decapitated Cat. Loved it. So, um, where do you think this is going then? I mean, it's it was it was it was a kind of C story to be honest, and maybe one that could even have been left out for the week because it didn't really add a huge amount to all the other drama that was going on. But maybe it was a nice sort of palate cleanser. Um, where do you think this is going? Do you think yeah. she's going to get is Pearl staying at this school or or what's going to happen? I think so. I think it's going to be kind of like a miraculous, this video's done the world of good and kept Pearl in. I mean, Kim is so desperate to keep Pearl in that school and she loves showing off the fact that Kim is in this school. And the, even the head teacher said that Pearl thrives at this school. So I think it would be quite disappointing for me if, if this character should then be pulled out. If Pearl was a little bit older then obviously there's a story there that could have been told perhaps where Pearl feels a bit like when she goes back to Wolford High then Pearl feels like she's you know uh, out of out of the loop doesn't feel like she's one of the kids in the school she she feels she's better because let's be honest if if, in 10 years time Pearl is going to definitely be a mini me Kim and I am living for Mm. that I cannot wait for that to happen I just want to see that right now but still a little bit too young but that's still to come with Howie and Kim I cannot wait. I really want to see them together. I think they're a lovely match. And I love the fact that if they did get together, technically she's going, she's going to be dating, uh, basically Vincent again, because when we first were introduced, we knew him as Vincent <laughs> Hubbard. So technically she's that's back true. together with Vincent. That's, true. So yeah. that's almost like a kind of hey, a roundabout hurrah. way, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Hooray Everyone's for that. Happy. Hooray for that. Um, there you go. Yeah, yeah, but but also I love the fact that they that scene you were talking about when Kim threw her handbag over the shoulder that there was mm. that interaction with Cat this week because it just reminded us that the reason why Phil is going down and Keeble keeps saying you're going yes. down soon is because what Kim had reported um to the police so there's there's a tension that we we which I completely forgot about between Kim I forgot when about Kim, it when Kat yeah. first said to Kim like I don't want yeah I don't want you in the Vic I don't don't want you to be our anniversary I thought why why are you yeah, and then clicked. So yes, so yes, I'm 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 on board for that as well. That tension. So yeah, uh, that's right, that's right. So yeah, I like I like anything as we said. Anything with Kim in it, I you know, I enjoy it. I hate it when they make her too much of a comedy character. They found just the right balance this week: a little bit of comedy, a little bit of drama, and a little bit of romance. And I really enjoyed it a lot. So yeah, Viva la Kim! More please. Uh so the. The big story this week. The big story this week. And uh, we're going to start off at the beginning, which was Grey. So, Grey has finally admitted his crimes to Kirat. However, yes. before <laughs> Kirat yes. could do anything about it, a fight broke out and he got smacked around the back uh. of the head, fell on the floor and now he's in hospital. This isn't before, though, that Whitney was banging on the door frantically, going, is everything all right in there? Can I help? And then yeah. just after she got no reply, went bored. back to the cafe and had a coffee. Got bored. <laughs> got bored. Yeah. Just no, I guess sat down and got a cup of coffee. Yeah, everything's fine, so, then. 
<laughs> How exciting was this story for yeah, you? I mean, I mean for, for the very, first time it was very in exciting. weeks, I'm actually excited about the Grey Movement. story. Movement! Movement! Ah! Oh! No. Yeah, it's great. Um, I liked the f- I liked the fight. I liked I liked Grey crawling over the table like a spider, and I really enjoyed the fight, which kind of reminded me of Peter Griffith <laughs> and the chicken. You know, I, <laughs> like you know yes. when he was just moving left left and right towards the thing. That was nice. I like that. But do you know what? Actually, it felt worth it. It felt like this was a big moment, and it felt like we wanted the story to feel like for so long that you know some momentous event in the story. And do what um, what they which we will discuss later is they threw not just one momentous event of his story, but another momentous event. The storyline is officially nope. reaching its end yes. because stuff is kicking off. Um, uh, but I loved the scenes yes. with Gray and Kira out this week. Actually, I thought it was a really strong confrontation scene. I tell you. Do you know what? I've got a theory, actually, that one of the reasons that we've been struggling a little bit with the pacing of EastEnders over the past year or so, because ever since the... I'm not saying it's all perfect still, but ever since the 30-minute episodes came back, it feels so much better, doesn't it? And I think what they were trying to do before was to cram 30 minutes worth of episode into 20 minutes, and I think that's where it was going wrong, because they would, because the pacing felt off, and it felt like they were trying to do too much in a shorter amount of time. Whereas now, the episodes are almost like they're, it's like they've unfolded them, and we can see actually what the episode was supposed to look like. Um, and I, honestly, like an they feel so flower. much better now. Like, s- yeah, exactly. Like, and scenes are allowed to just play out normally. People can have conversations, not people aren't going, oh, no, no, oh, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, you're bad. Yeah, I'm going to fight you. Bang! And then run away, and then that's the end of the scene. Whereas now they can have conversations, they're allowed to take time. Um, and it's great. And the, and the Kira and Grey scenes were, were brilliant. I really liked them. And, yeah, so I did wonder how much Grey was actually going to confess to Kira. I thought it was going to be one of those moments where, you know, he's kind of got him on the table and goes, yeah, well, you're going to be victim number four or something like that. But all he got actually got yeah. out of um, Grey was the uh, was the Chantel thing, which, let's be honest, was enough. You that's know, that'll true. Do. <laughs> that'll do. A start of a ten, that'll do, you know. <laughs> um, and then... And then Kirat kind of, like you say, went up, like grabbed a vodka bottle and just whacked Grey over the head with it, which produced quite a pool of blood. Quite the pool. Did you, was there a moment where you thought Grey was dead? Did you wonder whether that that was it? Because I was, I, I was kind of sitting there oh, going, no. if he's dead, I'm going to be furious. <laughs> because after everything that man has put me through, I want him to be punished further than that. <laughs> Yes. Oh no. Not 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 at one point did I think Grey would be dead because I thought no. as much as we've 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 prayed and protested about the length of this storyline, they're never going to end it just on the fact that he'd be whacked around the back by a bottle, back, back of the head with a bottle. Really of bottle. lame, wouldn't uh, it? No, it was never going to end there. Yeah. It would have been a bit lame. And also, there's been a big debate, hasn't there? Especially on Twitter this week, I've noticed where uh, there's been two kind of camps of people. One more kind of more wanting it to be that he does die and that would be his ultimate end more than there's been people who want him to actually have the court ca- uh, you know be be arrested be trialed for it it's funny because we were watching the matthew rose uh story and steve owen story this week on classic center oh yes and they've literally done four ep- four days worth of episodes of a courtroom scene and i realized that i love that they are going to kill gray they have they're gonna it's brilliant and they, they but they are going to end end up killing gray because they're not, I don't think we're still at that point where they're going to give the time for an interesting courtroom drama to play out with Grey. Because they don't, they don't seem to want to do that off the square anymore. Everything seems, if it doesn't happen on the square, it's not happened. It's a bit yeah. like Vegas. If it's, everything that's happened out in Vegas stays in Vegas. Everything that happens in the square stays in the square. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. just feel like that they're not going to move that to that point. So as much as I agree with a lot of people out there who said like, you know, he should get justice because this is and ultimately is a domestic abuse storyline, which it, it was. Yeah. It's moved on a bit since then, kind of t- t- turning around a little bit. I think, I think that they are going to kill Grey. But what do you think? Do you think they could, might have the chops of kind of well, moving it on and having him arrested and moving it to an investigation? It's interesting that you say about court scenes because in my, if I'm, I'm currently spooling my memory of um, sort of big court storylines, not just in EastEnders, but in soaps over the years. Like, you go back as far as the Deirdre mm. Barlow, I didn't do it! Um, you know, that thing. Um, oh, I even love as far that. As, uh, going back to, yeah, <laughs> going as far as back as Brookside when um, Mandy Jordash killed Trevor and they had a week long, uh, literally a week of just court scenes and really intense long court scenes. Yeah. Great. Anybody wants to check that out, it's, that's, that's brilliant. But um, and the little Mo stuff, of course, that w- that went on at all cold. But all of all the things, all of this, these things have in common is the fact that the defendant didn't do it, 
and we're hoping and we're watching all the evidence go by and we're watching the uh we, you know we're oh, please not guilty please not guilty i can't ever remember a time when a court scene a court story has been done like that when the defendant actually did it and we're wanting them to go down so i wonder if that's not as maybe that wouldn't be as as fascinating to watch as it would be when they're talk. It's not as intense, maybe. And also, the thing about soap the, these days, yeah. and again, not just EastEnders, but you kill, you die. You know, that tends to be the you know, unless you're Janine and you know you get some sort of or Tracy Barlow in Corrie or something, and you get some sort of golden <laughs> ticket handed to you. The chances are, if you become a serial killer, you're gonna die. That's just the way soap law works. So, and honestly, I wouldn't mind Gray dying mm. because he's a nasty piece of work at the end of the day. And I get the whole point thing of going to prison. I liked the theory of you know Gray being sent to prison and then having to share a cell with Lucas and then his life just being hell for the rest of it, and he knows what being bullied is like. That has a beautiful sort of ribbon to it, but. I think death is probably coming for him. Uh, and the thing is, it's I, you kind of have to wonder how Grey is going to die. I ha- I do have a theory of how Grey is going to die, if I'm honest. Um, because, Ooh. spoiler alert, Share. so do, do sort of... Well, like I say, spoiler alert, because a little bit of news also got released this week, which I'm going to mention here, but like I say, if you don't like spoilers, flick forward a bit. Um, Keegan is leaving. Uh, obviously, yes. Chantel's brother. I believe that Keegan's going to kill Grey. When he finds out what's gone on, and that's how Keegan leaves, and that's how Grey. Leaves. I mean, they haven't confirmed that's that. That's not something they've confirmed. That that Keegan they have. is that that's your theory. <laughs> Keegan is leaving, but they but they haven't confirmed Keegan that leaving. Keegan's oh, no, the one haven't... who kills. But, but oh, they no, haven't no, confirmed nothing that like that. No, Keegan's that's the one my who theory. Kills Grey. No, yeah. no, that's your no, that's theory. My theory. Yeah. But Keegan leaving is yeah. is real. That's the spoiler. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. but but you, oh, it's Bye, right. Keegan. So I see. So it's going to be we'll a family matter. I mean, it's interesting. It's mm, interesting I that Karen so. kind of got involved as well this week, didn't she? Because she had a go at Suki, yeah. which we'll talk a bit more about in later on. But she had a go at Suki in the cafe. So I feel like, yeah, you're right. They're kind of introducing the Taylor family into this a little bit more again because mm. um, Karen and Mitch are sitting by the bedside of grey and being quite sympathetic which surprised me a little bit with Mitch because Mitch how Mitch has kind of turned 180 about his opinion of grey has kind of taken me aback a little Mm. bit but then I suppose Mitch is a bit fickle so it kind of makes a little bit of sense yeah but so I I, I, I find it interesting that they kind of they are introducing the tailors back in yeah well this is the thing what I also think is going to happen is that it's going to it's either going to be a who done it when Grey dies, or it's going to be a who does it. As in, we know Grey is going to die and he's going to be murdered by somebody. That's going to get revealed at some point or, or released. But it's going to be hmm. we're waiting to see who does it. You know, and I and I think it will be one of the tailors. I think it that this like I say purely theory based right. at this point. I don't technically even know that Grey is going to die. I'm just pretty sure that he will. Um, but I think that's what's going to happen because we've got a, when the schedule changes, which we will talk about at the end of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, keep listening to the end we'll be talking about big, that yes big week is coming that week um, and I have a feeling that's when Grey is going to meet his end in whatever way it happens and I feel that it's going to be a whodunit in some in some way purely theory but I think that's what's going to happen what do you think I, I, I have to say I think that's the way it's going to go I, I'm with you I think they are going to kill Grey um and again, for me, I think that is really because they took it down the route of a serial killer. It's the only way they could go. If they had stuck purely to the domestic violence story, perhaps instead of killing, you know, cushioned Tina, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to say at this point, I admit, I think Tina has died. I'm sad to say. I think she might but, have done um, now. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so if they if they cut out that part and they maybe just introduce Chelsea into the, or, or Whitney into the relationship with Grey and then maybe made stretch that out to a little bit to continue the domestic violence, I just I wonder why they just decided they didn't have the confidence to carry on the domestic violence story. That's what baffles me. That's hey, what no, we may me. never what we may never know. Think, I think that it, yeah. I, I mean, I think it was just a case of, right, we were, let's have a square, let's have a serial killer, let's have a square psycho, um, and let's, and they kind of just decided to, and, and to be fair, in terms of the way that, yeah, well, to be fair, in the way that the soaps have done serial killers before, 
that this is a bit it's it's not one we, it's not a route we've seen before to get from you know character to serial killer hopefully it's a route that we're never going to see again because mm. you know but it's it's <laughs> it, i think, it, it I think that's one. all it was is the fact that we've seen it wasn't a great but we've seen this bloke go from you know an abuser an angry person and it's like all serial killers in soaps, the people that died were basically him trying to cover up his trying to cover up his secrets. That's normally why serial killing happens in his soaps. tracks. Yeah, um, yeah. So, and unfortunately, people that we liked had to get in the way, and people that we liked had to die. It has always it has almost felt, felt a bit like a caretaking story where it's just like, well, that character needs to leave, so great, she can find out about this, and that's how she dies, and he needs to leave, so we can sort that out. Great, can kill him, but you know. We've we've mm-hmm. moaned enough about it over the past year or something, so we're not. It's not going to be anything new that we say now. However, this week is bringing new things into the equation because it feels like we're actually momentously moving on towards an towards a climax. Yes, we are moving on, and we'll be talking a lot more about that after these messages. Support for Wolford Weekly podcast is brought to you by Manscaped who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the Ultimate Men's Hygiene Bundle, the performance package. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code WOLFORD at manscaped.com. If my math is correct, that's about 8 million balls. Oh my god, Ben, this is so exciting. This whole kit is just luxury, isn't it? For your balls. <laughs> luxury for your balls. For down below. Yeah, we've tested all products. We have. I mean, I tested this immediately as soon as I saw a ball toner. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't need a ball toner in their life? I certainly didn't know I did, and now I can't get enough of it. So what do you get in the performance package? You get quite a few things. You obviously get the ball toner and yeah. the ball deodorant. The ball deodorant. The I lovely mean. bag as well. And this nose trimmer. I mean, again, this... Ever since I've gotten older, and I don't like to say my age, although I tend to say quite a lot when I'm on the podcast, uh, hair seems to grow in places I didn't even realise hair could grow. So this is really helpful for sticking up my nose, sticking it in my ears. And we've also got the weed whacker as well. Now that so. is the beauty. It's 4.0, yes. so this is the fourth generation of shaver for and the down The best there. thing about this is what I found when I've used it, is the light. Yes. That's the best thing. So you can do so. it in the dark so no one will ever know that what you're up to. How can our viewers get these? Well, they can look for it on manscaped.com, where there's not only this performance package, which comes with all this that you can see in front of you, including this newspaper as well, which you can use as a bath mat. So if you want to shave dry yep, trimmings. for trimmings, but you can also use that in the shower because it's waterproof too. But it's also not uh, just for down below. I used it for my beard. I don't know if anyone That's noticed. That's what I did too. Yeah. Go to manscaped.com, have mm-hmm. a look at all the goods that they have. And that shipping is worldwide as well. So you can be in the UK, you can be in Canada, America, Australia. Australia, no matter where you are, you can get free shipping and 20% off as long as you use the code Wolford at manscaped.com. Yeah. So where was that again? I believe it was manscaped.com. And the discount code is? Wolford for 20% off and free shipping. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code Wolford at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code Wolford. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Hello and welcome back. So we shall now continue our discussion of the Grey and Kirat story. Now, as we said, big momentous events happening this week. Obviously, Grey has confessed to Kirat that he has uh, killed Chantel. And Kirat knows that and Whitney knows that. And I think Chelsea knows that now as well because... Um, we had a lovely scene with Chelsea this week, which I absolutely loved, where she... Um, Realised that she was. Okay, we've said we've said a, a, a bit that they seem to have quite fast forwarded sort of the effect that Grey has had on Chelsea, and that I think was no further demonstrated this week when Chelsea was on her own in the kitchen, accidentally dropped a bit of toast on the floor, and then went to clear it clear it up because Grey wouldn't like that. But then thought well, he's not here, Messy I'm free, pump. and then just made a mess everywhere. <laughs> was pouring milk everywhere, and then it turned oh, the music yeah. off, had a big old dance around it. Loved it, and that was actually quite a nice scene. I liked these. I liked the, the fact that she felt absolutely free, and I think that also is kind of cemented that she's back on side again, doesn't it? 
Well, I think she's concerned about Grey, and I think there is a I level so. that he had an effect on her. But I think that now she's she, she's clearly not that worried anymore. Can't be asked to go see him in hospital. I'm more worried about Jordan, which is how it should be, because Karen came and said, "Do you want to come to the hospital?" Because yes. no, I'm having a pizza. Thank you very much, and a glass of wine, and I'm going to, I might, <laughs> and I might spill more milk on the floor. So Chelsea's absolutely fine now. Um, but yes, the uh, the momentous events continue because Tina's body. Has been discovered. Now, Alex. <laughs> yes. <laughs> did you have on your bingo card? What, I mean, how, just out of interest, did you have any theories on how Tina's body was eventually going to be discovered? Because I can guarantee whatever theory anybody had, it wasn't this. <laughs> I mean, no. I mean, it, it, I didn't have a theory. I, I didn't have a joke that I made two weeks ago that Phil would go and beat up some teenage boys uh, would actually actually yes. happen on the show. And that's what's that's, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. So well, in a rage, Phil decided up. to break open the floor. Well, no, but in a rage, he got to threaten them in a rage, beat up the floor with a metal pipe in the mm. argy bargy, and then underneath the floorboards he saw. Tina's hand. Now we must we must also mention that um, yes. before all this, Pirat uh, had ran away um, after asking for help from Stacy. Oh yeah, kind sorry, of yes. harbored her, harbored him away in a car. Um, and so Stacy's the only one who really knows where he is at the moment. And she's passed on the message to Suki and to Vinny, who are both very, very worried um, about him. Um, you know, Suki's really, again, showing a vulnerable side. Brilliant scene, actually. I really enjoyed a scene between Stacey and uh, Suki. But yes, the Suki and Stacey stuff was absolutely brilliant. Um, Akira's going to be back soon, I take it. I think, he, I assume he's just sort of hiding for a little while and then he'll, and then he'll come back soon, probably in a final confrontation with Grey. Um, but... Yeah, I really liked the uh, stuff with Suki. Um, and Vinny having a little breakdown in the shop uh, was nice, because Vinny's yes. not coping well with all this at the moment. Um, but <laughs> what I did want to mention briefly with the uh, Vinny and Suki stuff was, Vinny went to see Dottie in the club, and they started talking about dads, didn't they? And Dottie mentioned, well, what about your dad? And Vinny said... Yes. Uh, well, no, because if Suki finds out, if, if mum finds out I went behind her back, Grace's not going to be the only one in hospital. So there is stuff happening there, isn't there? They were alluding to something there, and that means that we're going to... St- Surely this means that... The way that they ended the scene, Dottie sort of looking like, uh, means that we're going to discover something more about this dad soon, surely. that Surely. I can't be the only one that thinks this. Surely, Alex. Surely, 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 surely. No, I don't think you are. I, I Surely, 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 surely. I don't think mm. you are. I, I thought the exact yes. same thing. As soon as it got brought up, I thought, hello, hello, is Daddy Panasar mm. on the way? Daddy yes. Panasar that we've been begging to come onto the show months and months um and not Kira. yeah mm. and no and no no but so yeah so how do you think this will play out do you think dotty is going to introduce because last week i said that perhaps vinnie will bring back dot to kind of like counsel dotty do you think i had the right idea yeah. but the other way around was dotty going to bring back the panasar well, daddy possible to counsel vinnie well, and how prison, is Suki gonna we feel don't about really this? still don't yeah, well, this is the thing. We still really don't know what Suki's in, uh, what um, Daddy Panasar is in prison for. We don't even know his name, but we don't well, know what he's it. in prison for. We don't know how long he's in prison for, and something has gone on. You know, we all we know is that there was a house fire um, to do, and I think there was racial hatred apparently behind the house fire. But that's all we really mm. know. So. And obviously there is some big dark secret. And there's obviously some big dark secret that Suki hasn't told the rest of her family. Because when Jags died, she they were all expecting the dad to be at the funeral and be released from prison for the funeral. And Suki never told him. So yeah, something big yeah, is yeah. going on behind the scenes with the Panasars. And this hopefully is the start of us finding out exactly what's going on. So watch this space for the Panasars because... Yes, I'm very, very, very excited because they've been quiet for a little while now and it's time they came to the forefront. And I said that I wanted 2022 to be the year of the Panasars and this might be the start of it. So watch this space. <laughs> um, One last thing. You know how Martin wound Stacey down to like the point that they then got together, got married, had a kid, so on and so forth. Do you think that's what's kind of happening between Dottie and Vinny now? <laughs> Do you think Vinny is slowly winding Dottie, grind, grinding her down and Dottie is slowly... Because Dottie was quite 
quite kind to him this week, considering considering weeks prior to this, she's kind of not really cared and taken any of his affections, kind of thrown it back to in his face. This week she seemed to care. So this week she saw that he was in need of some help and actually put a, a hand out to kind of help him out a little bit. So do you think there's yeah? Well, I think she's starting to... somehow. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, because I think that she's kind of realised, well, he's actually doing quite a lot for me. He's actually putting quite a lot of effort in here. Yeah. I should probably kind of listen to his problems. I should maybe have a conversation with him and see how he's doing. Because he's not, he's, you know, his, his brother's run away after an attempted murder charge. So I should probably just think, you're all right, mate. You're right, have a beer. You're all right, mate. You're all right. Gave, gave, gave him a free beer <laughs> and gave and gave him dad advice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I, again, I, I mean, the Dottie and Vinny thing is nice. You know, I think they're, I think they're different enough characters to almost, to also work together. So, I, yeah, I look forward to seeing how mm-hmm. they're going to develop. But, yes, Panasar future is exciting, hopefully. So, uh, yes, yeah, so with them, we're going on, I think, to, uh, Phil and Tommy storyline, which will lead us into the discovery of Tina's body. Yes. And, the the bullying storyline has reached its has reached I think its peak this week because um, these bullies are seemingly hanging around the square at ways like they've decided just to kind of follow Tommy around where he lives now where they find they find him in the park they find <laughs> they, they hang around the square and they're just waiting to pop out of any corner and chase him around and threaten and threaten to beat him up um, and I thought there was some <laughs> yes. really really interesting stuff with Tommy this week I mean for a start Tommy. The actor who plays Tommy, future star of the show. He's got that sort of star quality about him. He's brilliant. He's amazing to watch. And I can't wait to see more on Tom, from Tommy in the future. Um, but I thought there were some really interesting scenes this week. Because Phil is kind of using his last days, which apparently have eventually arrived, um, to kind of teach Tommy uh, how to defend himself. Because it's, it's officially clear Phil never learns anything when it comes to how you influence a child and never will learn anything. The he spirit is, of Eric Mitchell lives firmly within him. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> such a bad father to his sons. He's not much better to his daughter, it's to terrible. be fair. But to, like, to his, his, no. his, his blood sons and his adopted sons, he's just... Oh. And like the advice he was giving to Tommy while Tommy was punching the punch bag, he's like, oh, you've got to look after yourself. I won't be here forever. I'm going in for life, Tommy, for life! And it's like, Tommy's like, what? What? What's going on? I can't understand. It's, it's like that meme with the woman with all the math equations coming around his head. I felt so sorry for poor Tommy. Like, all this information just uploaded into his head by by Phil. So toxic. I know. So toxic. It's dangerous. It really is. Um, but what I absolutely loved this week was the scene between Ben and Tommy because Ben sort of was wandering along the wandering along uh, and yeah. discovered like this little confrontation going on between Tommy and the bullies and sort of got rid of the bullies and and Tommy and Ben start having this discussion and it really is looking at a before and after Phil Mitchell, isn't it? Like the after effects of like if you look at Ben and there is just the caricature of what the results of being brought up by Phil Mitchell looks like. A messed up kind of yes. guy that is prone to exploding damaged. anger. You know, a messy, damaged person. And I think Ben is sort of looking at Tommy and going, right, well, I need to be looking after you. If my dad's got his claws into you, I need to be keeping an eye on you. Um, and that was, and I, I loved that. I thought that was a really great scene. And then, you know, and Ben later goes around to Phil and they have a, a further confrontation because I think Phil seems to think that Ben is over obsessed now with the, with getting the chicken shops. I don't think Ben could care less about the chicken yeah. shops at this stage. <laughs> like, he's not that bothered. I think, um, yeah. But there was I a really think, nice scene I think between that them. Ben mm. feels like he's being left out like he's not he's always the he's always the second yeah. thought for Phil if like when he gave Jay the archers he was always the second thought you know there's been a lot of things and I did love that like you said when Ben was having that conversation with his dad Phil about how he kind of brings up children like Tommy and Denny as being two examples of you know future fails um he reminded us of when he whacked George around the back of the head because Phil also said like uh, you yeah. need to ch- give him a smacking down and I thought that was clearly clearly a nod to something that happened mm. with young Ben a few yeah. years ago yeah. and then he brought nice. up Heather as well and yeah. he said I can still see Jordan I can mm. still see Heather I, when I close my eyes I still see them on the floor you know you did this to me you did that to me and Phil almost wouldn't take blame he said no you're you're the one who ultimately carried out the action 
I, you know, I may have taught you that you should stand up for yourself, but you, you the one who took it that step too far. Stand up for because Phil famously has never killed. He's got people to kill for him, but he's never killed. So you know, it's it's, close Phil, a few times, but it's yeah. almost like saying, yeah. But so, um, so it's almost like that. That kind of like you know, if a man gets overweight from eating too much McDonald's, it's not McDonald's fault. It's the man who's eaten all the McDonald's because he should have had more, you know, kind of a curb himself from eating all that food. (laughs) You shouldn't. But that, you know, that's what Phil was kind of saying to Ben. Yeah. Um, Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you think there's some truth to that? Do you think that Ben, you know, kind of Ben's unhinging is more down to him than to Phil? Because we've always been, we've targeted Phil quite a lot. But I have by saying like his, his father, his (laughs) parenting isn't, yeah, Yeah, his parenting isn't the best. But should I maybe take some of the blame off Phil? Am I wrong to give him all that blame? I mean, like, well, to be fair, Eric Mitchell is more to blame than, than Phil ever was. Because if you think that Ben's messed up, look <laughs> at Phil. You know, what exactly did Eric mm. Mitchell do to his sons, actually? Both of them, Grant and Phil, to result in what yeah. those two became. Grant, if anything, is worse than Phil. Because Grant's, I think, a little bit more unhinged than Phil is. I don't... I, there's always... Nine times out of ten, there's more logic to Phil's outburst than there is Grant's. Because I think Grant's just prone to kind of exploding. Mm. And even Phil's a bit scared of Grant. He's just angry. But I feel that the... the <laughs> He is, and I feel like the blame for that has to rest purely on Eric Mitchell's door, because what do you do to your children to get that? <laughs> to get the result that we have Phil and Grant. Yeah. So all Phil is doing is is doing how he's... And he's had it... And the problem is he had it so ingrained into him that he believes that that is the only way of parenting. And how many arguments yeah. has Phil had with his kids' mums over the years, even other people's mums and parents over the years, about the way that they parent their kids over the way that he does? You know, and even when the evidence is there, and you look at Ben, who I think, because we've seen Ben grow up over the years with many different faces, but we've seen Ben just go through trauma after trauma after trauma because of the way that he's trying to live up to his dad's reputation and and live up to the way that his dad, he wants, he's always wanted, Ben's big thing has always been that he wants his dad to be proud of him, you know, and that's how he came through, so went through so much self-hatred about being gay. I still believe to this day that whoever came up with the idea of giving Phil Mitchell a gay son needs promoting to the highest levels of writing. (laughs) I think it was a genius idea. Um, uh, but, you know, and it, it, it was just another thing that Ben beats himself up about. And I think now Ben has sort of grown out of that. He's getting there, I think. There's still elements of that there. But I think that Ben is sort of, is, is far enough out of it to be able to look at Tommy and see the sort of the seedlings of that sort of relationship starting to develop again. Um, so I think it's going to be interesting to sort of, I think we might have established a little bit of a relationship between Ben and Tommy at this stage, which I think, which I think is, is going to be interesting moving forwards. Um, but the, the bullies this week, uh, like I say, are after, after Tommy <laughs> and, uh, the night of Phil and Cat, oh, because we should also say we, Cat Mitchell, is is officially on the way? Apparently, I said the summer last week. I didn't mean next episode. Oh, right. Which you? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't think it was going to happen this quickly. Uh, but, but yeah, we're going. Well, well, apparently we're heading towards a wedding, but we we don't know if we are or not. But I presume we are in some way at some point. But the night of the engagement party, Tommy is chased through the square by the bullies and goes and hides in the mosque. And uh, the bullies approach him uh, yes. and chase him in there, and it all goes a bit mad. And then Phil arrives because Lily has told uh, him that uh, Tommy's being chased around. Uh, arrives in the mask in typical Phil style with a lead piping, not even the baseball bat. I'd have thought that Phil would have reached straight for the baseball bat that we know lives under his stairs, but he didn't bother with that. No. Grabbed a drain pipe of some description. Didn't have time to get there. And went after these yeah. kids. Just ripped didn't have time wall. to get that. Um, they just <laughs> just ripped it off the wall. <laughs> And then just kind of chased after the kids. Um, and then it's attempted to scare them. You know, I don't think he was ever going to whack any of them, but he is, you know, he's doing his whole no, film. No, thing. but at this. And is. Yeah. And begin, begins. <laughs> and then begins whacking the floor, like proper, like Phil, and uncovers Tina's body. But it was just the way that it happened. It was kind yes. of just like, bra, bra, Phil smash! Ooh, Rah. what's that? <laughs> uh, it was like, but I, I swear to God, I did not think that that was going to be how Tina's body was unearthed. That was the discovery. <laughs> no, I know, I know. So and the, the, the thing is, is that they had, they had such a more legit way of like getting the the the, the discovery of Tina's well, what was body. The point they of the had cat so explosion? many ways. Again, 
Well, the gas explosion, but investigating that. Well, what investigation had been done in that place? Because it looked like it had been touched. It looked like they just kind of of turned up and just had like a picnic, put the blanket down, shuffled off a bit yeah. of dirt, and just sat there and had a picnic for two days, and then said, "Oh, there's not enough funds, so I we can't you... look any further," and off they went. No, as I said, it's like I said to you earlier. That building doesn't look like it's been touched by a light breeze. Never mind a gas explosion. Uh, honestly, the building's fine. Like it just looks a bit dusty. <laughs> like, I don't know where this explosion was meant to have taken place, but it wasn't in any part of the set that any of the characters yeah. were wandering around. Um, so I don't understand what it's, really it's, the point um, of the explosion was that they were, when... they were so determined uh, to have. <laughs> it reminds me of when Sharon took over what is now the gym. It's like when she got um, two people, she got Cat yeah. uh, and uh, Jean to like clean up this whole gym. But it looked quite clean, really, considering no yeah. one had used that boxing that gym right. for like eight, nine years. It was fine. Do a quick, no. quick spit and dust, it and right. it was done. You know, <laughs> cleaned up fine. No problem. Yeah. No problem at all. But yeah, yeah. There so they have discovered Kim's body, but just as just as Tina's Phil body. phoned the police. Sorry, yeah, Phil, Tina's body. So you just feel don't kill police. Kim. Christ, Keeble saw this as a, yes. <laughs> Keeble saw this as a get in as a as an in card because he'd been she threatened him earlier Why? in the week because it did get bring yes. it did get brought up that he's had long enough to think about whether he wants to grass. He's had he's quite well, a while. Yes. He's had a couple of months. Yes, he has. He's had long enough. He's had a think. He's had a little think. Um, and he's decided he's not going to grass. Mm. Keeble said, well, then your time is almost up. You haven't got long. Phil's panicking over this. And Keeble then used that, that him calling the police to, to, you know, say he's discovered Tina's body as the way of arresting That'll him. That'll do. Uh, but everyone around him <laughs> yeah. thought, yeah, but everyone, I know, this will do. But everyone around him thought that he was getting arrested for the body that was found under the RG barge, which I found a little bit yes. curious. Yes. Um, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, he got he got his final goodbye, didn't he? With, with Cat, he turned around, and went, "Cat, I love you," yeah, and then kind of turned back around. Which is and Tommy which had is tear coming down. Yeah, which which is Phil, which is Phil for "I love you forever." Please wait for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I've I, I, I've said this before, and I'm not, I'm not going to hide behind the fact that I'm not a hundred percent on board with Cat and Phil. I thought that Cat was a bit. I, I feel was a bit. A bit not feel like it feels you... like up and down this week, all over the place. Like he just felt like one minute he was Phil, mm. next minute he was like this completely like different Phil, and then the next moment he's like when he winked at Tommy after he like got the pipe on the floor. It's, 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 Phil kind of had a Phil was the biggest journey for me this week, and <laughs> it just felt like but right. a bit confu- I had moments of confusion. But um, but you you yes. you more you're more on board with Cat and Phil, aren't you? I mean, I wouldn't say I'm on board with it. I'm just sort of, I'm just, I've just, I've accepted it for what it is. I don't think it's going to be. Mm. I've, I've always said I don't think it's going to be one of the squares longest. I don't think we're looking at like the next Den and Angie, for example. I think it will be no. over at some point soon. I can't see Cat Mitchell being a thing forever, if I'm perfectly honest. But I don't mind them together. Um, and actually, what it has given us is, you know, I like this whole thing with Phil and Tommy, and now Ben's included. I also, I also want to mention um, reason number seven hundred and eighty-nine why Callum's a rubbish police officer because he, you know, they were all trying <laughs> to hide the fact that Phil had just unearthed a dead body from Callum, and then Callum sort of arrived and went, "But it's a dead body! It's a dead body! There, there it is! Dead, dead body!" And everyone's like, "Oh, Callum! Yeah. Honestly, there's a kid Callum, standing up. right there." <laughs> Right in front of you that you know was just in the building, but you thought that was a great time to mention. He's useless as a police officer. <laughs> he um, wasn't even in uniform. Yeah, so he now wasn't even been in uniform around. there. He just no, turned up and then just nothing. declared it. <laughs> nothing. Just, yeah. that's a bo- that was his only line as well. It's his only line in the entire week was, there's a dead body there. <laughs> yep, there you go. That's <laughs> just to traumatise Tommy further, honestly. Um, so yeah, now Phil's, Phil's gone off to... to uh, to be arrested and presumably will be uh, getting interviewed by Keeble next week. I'm still not convinced that Keeble's telling the truth to Phil because I don't believe that Ada Maguire would have been a grass because the whole point of this is that Vincent was apparently killed for being a grass. So why would Aiden then be a grass being himself? A I, yeah, I think there's something else going I mean, on. I think that Keeble not... is literally just trying to get... Yeah. Her... I feel that Keeble is basically trying to have her cake and eat it. She's trying to get information out of Phil and then we'll still send him down for life, is my thinking. But, yeah, yeah I don't know. We'll, yeah. We may find out more about that next week. But 
Tina's body has finally been unearthed. It's officially Tina. I feel like our campaign of Tina's not dead, hashtag Tina's alive, is probably dead as dead as Tina probably is now. Hashtag because even alive. there's you know the stories where, <laughs> with the stories I mean, of Louisa Bradshaw White kind of giving up acting, giving up fame. She's done with it all. It's getting to a quite extravagant level to, if she is still alive. <laughs> It's all a ruse. It's all a ruse. No, I know, yes. I know. I, I, I finally impressed. admit that I think that Tina is the body under the floorboards of the Argy Bargy. A sentence that I never thought I'd ever yeah. say, but I am now declaring that it probably is Tina. It's um, almost like the show's kind of going, what more maybe... do you need? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> talking about Keeble, maybe, mm. uh, you know, kind of putting up a smoke screen. I I think so. I think they, Obviously, they're not going to keep Phil in prison for life. That's not something they would ever do right as, the, as his character. Um, I think the only way they would ever get rid of Phil is through uh, death. So, uh, you know, mm. that's 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 the the road they'll take maybe one day eventually. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, it's going to be a corrupt police, isn't it? It's going to be a corrupt police storyline. Yeah. Um, a lot of people of said that there's going to be... Callum's going to be involved in some way with it. I don't think he is because you've not seen... Have you noticed we've not seen a lot of PC Callum very much, have we? He's not really been around as a police officer very much. And I feel like they're kind of just slowly kind of forgetting that he's a police officer for them to then lead it maybe down a different path later on. Yeah, because the past few weeks have required competent policemen on the square because illegal activity has been going on. So that's prob- that might be why. Oh, I don't know. Callum is a police officer. I feel like that's the whole point of that story was to sort of give Ben and Callum that kind of issue the fact that he's and with phil as well like ben is now dating a police officer and the fact that the fact that phil was genuinely more offended about the fact that he was more offended about the fact that he was dating a police officer than he was a man you know that and all that but all that's kind of been done now so i kind of wonder what yeah. the future like you say yeah. what is the future of callum's career in the police force mm, we'll see um so yeah, that's that. So Phil's now in prison, and where, what happens now with Tina's body? It's been unearthed. The, the secret is out. Next week, people are going to presumably some. Presumably, they, we're going to skip over the whole kind of like DNA identification. That will be Tina. That is Tina's body. She, no one else would wear that that's pink fluffy coat, so it must be Tina. <laughs> so what happens now? Well, other than the homeless person. Um, yeah, well, yeah, let's I, just forget I, about that. I'm, I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing, I'm guessing that there's, there's that basically the investigation is all going to happen while Grey's still in the coma and that it's going to be right. when Grey wakes up from the coma, he'll get an earshot. He'll wonder why maybe police are around or something like that. He'll get an earshot that he's the number one suspect for Tina's death. Because surely, surely, as soon as Shirley gets wind of this and as soon as, soon as they realise how long she's, work it all out. Di- she's died for with the pathology she's mm. going to put it all together um, so another culp- uh, suspect for the who kills Grey storyline um, one of many mm. um, so that's my guess I think that Grey will wake up from his coma and then there'll be a, a shenanigan going on and he'll kind of run to uh, mm. an, an abandoned warehouse or find somewhere to hide possibly yeah. the Argy Bargy who because that seems Grey to be go to yeah, who does still go in the duff duff? And uh, yeah, that's how I think that it's going to go. What do you, do you have any theories of how this story will ultimately end? Then the grey story is going to end because we're there now, aren't we? Yeah, I think so. And this is the this is what I mean when I say I, this is why I think it's going to go in this direction. Someone is going to kill him, and I think that it's more going to be a case of a who will do it rather than a who done it. I'd be surprised if it goes into full who done it mode. Even though I wouldn't mind it, because I'd never mind who done it. I, I, li- I like an EastEnders who done it, because I think they're the best soap of doing them. And once all the secrets are out, there will be plenty of suspects that could kill him. You've got all of the Carters, all of the Taylors, Whitney, the Panasars would probably have something to say. Like there's a hu- there will be a huge amount of people that would quite happily want Grey dead. Um, so I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm really, I am really looking forward to the, the whole point of having a big long story is that you get a good old climax at the end of it. And nine times out of 10, climaxes are exciting as they are in life. Uh, so <laughs> I, um, I, I'm looking forward <laughs> to how this is all going to, uh, I'm looking forward to how all this is, how this is all going to end. Um, cause like you say, I think we are officially at Grey's end now. The days have approached. I yes. think we should have party poppers ready in a couple of weeks. So when this story officially reaches its oh, conclusion. Champagne will be poured, Grey. Champagne. Grey? Sorry, Rob. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Show. <laughs> How dare you? Um. Yeah. It's just, instead of we'll, that week, we'll have we'll have, we'll drink. We'll we'll have wine instead of tea and coffee. That's what we'll do. And we'll get drunk and we'll have a mad old time. That'll be I great. will. You know, I might. I let's actually might. So tune in for that yeah, one because let's do that, it. because obviously with changes of foot, with changes of foot, we might be able to do that. Uh. So one final final story then, and it's a very short one. Uh. Whether it will lead any elsewhere, I'm not too sure. But Honey has basically been flirted with by Mr. Lister, the voice of Double Dare. He is making some moves onto Honey. Um, Honey's not too impressed by it. Feels like she only got the job as the market inspector because he fancied her and has now decided, told Billy and told Jay that she's decided that she is going to prove that she can do the job, even though she's posting letters to submarines and all kinds of sorts of things that she can do the job and she's going to prove that she didn't get the job just on her looks she just got she did it on on her merit um yeah i, I actually thought there was i guess as you a term you used earlier on the podcast it was a nice little palette cleanser again it was a nice little gap yes. between the kind of darker more serious stories and i didn't mind them at all and the actress uh honey no. i adore her her facial expressions are perfect i like the way she reacts mm. with just a facial expression was just delightful um did you like it did you yes. like that billy kind of had a conversation with her yeah. this week as well without him trying to sleep with her or get back together with her that was a nice change as well I yeah think. that was nice yeah it was nice it, i like those kind of conversations where people just act like human beings and you know you you can't get away from yes. the fact that billy and honey have a lot of history together so it's nice sometimes for two characters that have that to have sort of it well i know you so let me tell you that this advice and what i think would be best for you because i know you so well i like those sorts of moments um with mr lister do you think that he's going to be a bit more of a recurring character because he's, he's kind of come and gone over the years he's not it's not a new actor playing mr lister we've mm. seen mr lister before um i don't know if we're just in a sort of mr lister area of the story at the moment or whether he might come back as a sort of more heavily recurring character in the future what do you think i don't wouldn't mind him i think he's quite a funny character he's you know his storylines are fairly amusing yeah. you know so i don't i don't mind him would you see would you like to see more of lister in the future why not? Because we've had the character of Market yeah. Inspector on numerous occasions, Tanwa, uh, mm. uh, Stacey. <laughs> um, but obviously prior to that, we, you know, we had Matthew's, uh, uh, dad whose name is escaping me I'm just going to call him Mr Rose just because I can't remember his name um, and also Lisa Lisa right. was the market inspector after him as well um, so yes. you know there's always been that character there um, old Robbie was the market inspector for a short term as well he so was there's always been that character there and so to have someone although he is the senior market inspector isn't he so I suppose he's one step above Hyman. yes he's the K-totes to John it's the K-totes to Honey's Johnson <laughs> That's, that's exactly it. Or, or Clen, Clenny. Uh, our, our old mate Clenny, he's coming yeah. down. Let us. Um, so, uh, Let us. <laughs> yes. He'll, he'll love to be, I'm sure he'll be love to, link, to be linked to Honey. And I'm sure uh, Kato's would be love to be linked to Mr. Lister. So <laughs> let's, let's just see where <laughs> Sorry, that goes. Yeah. But, um, hello, EastEnders. How are you? Uh, so, yeah. Well, you know, I, it, it's, it's good. Evening. Uh, yeah, so yeah, as you say, a little palate cleanser. Nice to see. Whether it will go any further, I'm not too sure. However, we have a big topic to discuss as EastEnders released a new schedule this week. And Rob and I are going to discuss it with your comments right now on I Ain't Want to Gossip. You know me, I ain't want to gossip. So unless you live under a rock, it's quite widely known there that the Stender schedule is changing because ITV have decided to put out a new magazine news programme at seven o'clock uh, in the schedule. So moving everything up one on ITV. We have discussed this before on one of our uh, I Ain't Want to Gossips. Go back, have a look for it. Um, if I remember, I'll put a link to it if you're watching this on YouTube at the top of the screen so you can click to it and it'll go straight to the time where we discuss it. However... We are now going to talk about EastEnders announcements to this. They're, they're now going to say what, well, they've now said what time they're going to release the episode. So they're dropping it Friday. They're putting it out Monday to Thursday, still keeping the four episodes a week. And they're putting it out at 7.30. This means that it's going to directly clash with Emmerdale. Directly clash every day with Emmerdale means it's going to be a direct competition. That gentleman's agreement that we've already discussed numerous times which ITV and BBC used to have has been torn up thrown out the window and rained upon because it no longer applies now there's a few things that we can unearth from this first of all 
are they kind of admitting that they don't mind that people don't watch it live anymore? Is appointment viewing now a thing that's a thing of the past? Um, do they feel confident that with a new era that they perhaps could bring back a lot of ratings and beat Emmerdale? Emmerdale, let's not forget, is doing quite well with a quite similar storyline. I've recently realised uh, uh, mm. on, on their on their show at the moment, even though that's getting quite heavy criticised with them, and also. And, yeah. and also, you know, 7.30, is that too early for EastEnders? A lot of people are saying that's too early for EastEnders. You know, perhaps a later slot would have been better. Perhaps an earlier slot might have been better. Now, I know for a fact, because Rob has already uh, chewed my ear, <laughs> that Rob has lots to say. So, Rob, come on then. What's your opinion on this before I delve in with mine? I'm, f- I'm fuming. What the hell are the other schedulers doing? The whole point of this was to... So they are... They're, the schedule changes to react to ITV's things because they put soaps all over the place in the schedule. So I know, instead of trying to avoid the soaps that have been put against us, let's put all the episodes against one soap for every single day that it's on the screen. I don't... What are they doing? Why are they going against Emmerdale every single episode? What is wrong with them? Like, what do they think is going to happen? That they're suddenly going to derail Emmerdale off the schedules and, Eastern, and, and ITV are going to go, well, that was a terrible idea. Let's move it all back and never speak of this again. I just think it's ridiculous. And the fact that, why didn't they move it to 7pm where there was no soap competition whatsoever in East End? And Monday to Thursday, I like the fact that they got rid of the Friday episode because that makes perfect sense because it's the lowest rated day of the week anyway. Monday to Thursday, same time every night. That's fine. That makes it easy to follow. You know exactly what's happening with the schedule. That I don't have a problem with. Going against Emmerdale every single episode. And not only that, but the fact that 7pm was free of any soap competition whatsoever. 7pm is a kind slot for it to go in. So it could have built on its own success that it's going to build over the next coming months. But no, instead of that, they put a doctor's episode on 7pm on BBC2 and not only a Doctor's episode <laughs> but a Doctor's repeat it's a repeat Alex an episode that has been on earlier that <laughs> day on BBC1 in the afternoon is yes, getting a yes. kinder slot than, he, than EastEnders is I don't understand what they're doing why? why? Um, yeah, I yeah. went I mean, I think, off on I think Twitter they're going <laughs> <laughs> I think what they're doing, they're playing with the Doctors thing, and anyone outside the UK might not know what Doctors is. So I'll quickly say, Doctors is a daytime soap that's shown on BBC One, um, and it's about a doctor's surgery. It, it's, I'm, I'm sorry if I've had anyone who likes Doctors, but it's not particularly great. But it, it gets good, I think it's quite popular it with the about kind of like full of retired people. community. <laughs> no, I think it's quite well received by like the kind of retired posse out there. They probably is. Um, so, very you know, it's right but, now, so, know, so, so, so I'm presuming that they're trying to go for maybe a bit more of a younger graphic for Doctors by putting it at six o'clock. Because it reminds me of Neighbours. Because remember, Neighbours used to be shown at daytime on BBC One. And then loads of kids, not that this is happening with Doctors, but lots of kids were saying, I think this famous story is, is that one of the schedulers for the BBC at the Times, kids at school, were saying... Oh, if all my friends talk about neighbours, they record it and watch it, and I can't see it because we don't have a, we don't record it or one thing or another. So why can't I watch it as well? And so the scheduler went the next day to the BBC and said, right, we're going to put it on at five thirty as well, so kids can watch it. And it was a boom. It was a success. It was huge. That really propelled neighbours. So I'm presuming that's their plan. They're trying to put doctors, as you say, repeat the the lunchtime episode on BBC Two at seven o'clock. Now I am with you. I am entirely with you. I thought seven o'clock would have been a much better time slot for EastEnders. They could have easily bumped the one show, which seems to be like the sacred show, the show that BBC do not want to move whatsoever from seven o'clock to 7.30. The only issue I would have is that obviously the seven o'clock slot is what... The seven o'clock slot is where ITV are planning to put their news magazine show. And let's be honest, the news is quite interesting at the moment <laughs> and it has been for quite a few months the news i think is going to pull in i think itv have been shrewd and they they've seen the the climate and news is is hot like people want to see news. people like to be like almost angered like with social media people like to be angered by what they see on on screen and so i'm presuming that's kind of what their plan is with their seven o'clock schedule so with this unknown entity i do get that the bbc is an unknown so it's a risk to perhaps put it on at seven o'clock and put it up against ITV. But East Emmerdale's not an unknown. And I think that maybe the schedulers, I can I can't speak for them, but I think the schedulers might think that Emmerdale was always seen as the third soap. 
EastEnders Coronation Street at the top, and then next tier down is Emmerdale. And so I think they think that with the right direction of the show, they could hurt Emmerdale's ratings. Because another thing is that Emmerdale have commercials, and you know a lot of people might prefer to watch EastEnders with no commercials and then come back to Emmerdale later. So that could be a pros- prospect. So unless there's a really gripping story... That could be a, maybe a reason for why East End, uh, the BBC thought EastEnders might work out best that way. But I can hear you tapping, so that is obviously something you don't agree with. Sorry. Anyone listening <laughs> to this podcast is really enjoying your tapping, Rob. <laughs> Sorry, uh, just, uh, irritation, I apologise. Um, I, I just It makes no sense to me. I don't understand why they've done it to the show. Like, Why would you make the, the show's job harder from the outset? To go, I, I understand what they're doing because the, the grey climax is coming on the week that it go that it goes up against Emmerdale permanently. Great. What about after that? You know what? You know what happens in the summer when when the soaps are kind of grasping for ratings at the best of times. Anyway, it just makes no sense to me whatsoever. Why would they? It's like how much crap does Chris Clenshaw have to deal with in his first few weeks on working on the show? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like we're I trying know. to get the guy He's in a hard breakdown. time, isn't he? He's Honestly. Like, oh. <laughs> like, and I, I went off about I went off about this on Twitter and everyone and I had people saying well the one show's on at 7 the one show's on at 7 I don't give a toss about the one show I could not care less about the one show and it's gone and the one show has gone against Emmerdale like all it's like for most of its life so why can't they just continue that and just oh, I mean I know we are an EastEnders podcast and we want and that's the show that we care most about so we want the show like you know polished and sort of looked after and placed in the nice chair and given all the nice food on the break and all that sort of thing I get that alright and I'm pro- and I'm probably going off on one for no reason because of course iPlayer exists and of course you know the show is more than and the, the BBC are always saying how well EastEnders does on iPlayer we don't know how well it does on iPlayer because I don't think they really release figures like that but they're always saying you know it's all that, that's their big thing about EastEnders it does amazingly on iPlayer so and that presumably is not going to go away and you would think actually that if like we say about Emmerdale having adverts you would think that you would record Emmerdale on Sky Plus or whatever watch EastEnders live because there's no adverts and then you could watch Emmerdale later and fast forward through the adverts so that's what I do but probably even that sounds like an old person's way of doing of watching TV these days you just watch it as and when you like <laughs> I don't know I think it's a stupid yeah. decision myself I I don't I don't know why they didn't just put it in the in a really good 7 p.m. slot to kind of give it its because you know it, 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 no one's under the impression that EastEnders is, is in its strongest period ratings wise at the moment you know it's it took a massive whack after everything that happened with covid and all of, and all of the other sorts of circumstances and it would have been kinder to it just to kind of give it a competition free slot to sort of build itself up and build on that success but they haven't done yeah. that they've just stuck it against a show that Emmerdale is beating Corrie in the rate. The Corrie Emmerdale is slowly creeping its way to being the number one soap in the UK at the moment. And fair play to Emmerdale because that wasn't a position that ever looked possible at one point in its history. So fair play to them. But why would you do that to EastEnders? I don't understand the logic. If anybody's listening from the BBC scheduling, please, please, please get in touch with us <laughs> and let us know. I mean, I mean, there've been lots of comments. I put it out on Twitter, and I asked lots of people to get in touch with us, and we did. We got huge uh, replies from lots and lots of people. Um, so I'm going to read some of them out, and we can maybe discuss some of them. So first of all, uh, Richard Fletcher said, uh, "It's a good move for the first time ever. EastEnders will have the same time slot and be on four consecutive nights. Consistency and continuity is the key, and better to go up against one half an hour soap than an hour long one. So that's a point. What was it? What would it have, would it have been better for it to go against an?" hour long uh, Coronation Street is it better that it's just going block for block so it's half an hour against half an hour so there's that argument there I mean I, I agree with what he says about the key, about the consistency I agree I, I, this is what I mean I totally agree with sticking it on at the same time every night and Monday to Thursday you not you can't go wrong with that you can't be like mm. oh is he send us on tonight of course it is it's, it's Monday to Thursday that's fine I get all that. that all of that is absolutely fine and perfect and well done to them for doing that I just mm-hmm. it's just the slot that's been put in. I um, yeah. uh, half an hour versus an hour. I mean, to be fair, I would have thought Emma EastEnders would probably derail Corrie more in that regard because you're going, you'd be leaving EastEnders and going straight into Corrie that's already started. So maybe that would be worse for Cor- for EastEnders because you just start Corrie worse, from the start, wouldn't you? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which which is probably the reason why on a Friday EastEnders did move from eight o'clock to eight thirty because the yeah. ITV decided they were going to make Coronation Street an hour long, and they knew they knew that no one was going to watch half an hour of Coronation Street, then go and watch Emma, uh, EastEnders. Then they tune, knew yeah. that people would just watch the full hour and then tune into EastEnders later. So that that does make sense. Gemma Archer 
on Twitter has said, uh, if they aren't bothered about overnights, why change it at all? Something doesn't stack up for me in that explanation. I like the idea of Monday to Thursday and that of a mixed time slot because I think it will help viewers watching live to find it. But 7.30 feels a little too early for me. Because, yes, in the article, they are quoted as saying that, you know, they're not fussed about whether they lose a few ratings because people can jump on the iPlayer and watch it a bit later on. The BBC aren't, aren't meant to be chasing ratings. Something we've argued before. The BBC aren't meant to be chasing ratings. They're public service. Service. they're not a commercial service yes. so to, for them to say oh we actually do want to be behind the scenes of course they're saying that of course they're saying it in all the offices yeah. of BBC Broadcasting House of course they are they're saying you know in L Street they're, they're all saying it they're all saying oh come on we really want to trample em- we really want to make ITV hurt yeah, let's trample course. them let's make em- let's go up against Emmerdale but publicly the BBC would never say that it's not about ratings it's not about that so there is that argument there that you know as you've you've touched on there's iPlayer people can watch it on iPlayer so is it really that big of an issue other than perhaps if there's a big storyline then you would watch it live but if there's not a big storyline and you're just kind of watching it as a matter of course which a lot of people do then why not just watch it on iPlayer Mm, I know, I know. And this is what I mean. I'm talking like an old person because, of course, and most of the time is when I, <laughs> and I say this, I watch it on iPlayer most of the time as well, to be fair. So I don't know really what I'm thinking. And what I'm more upset, what I'm more annoyed about is that I want the, um, I want the show to look as good as it can be. And the BBC at the moment is going through a stage, an unjustified stage where it's having to justify its own existence because people keep throwing sticks at it. And, I, and East, and EastEnders posting low ratings is another stick to beat the BBC with that the papers will... We saw it in the summer when, you know, when the papers are doing ridiculous things like taking a rating where it was A, in the middle of summer, um, I think against a sporting event and against the soaps, another soap on the same, on the same channel, and it had already been up- uploaded to iPlayer at the same time, and they're still using that rating as an example as to how far the show has fallen, despite the fact that they weren't talking about any of the other factors that were going on on it. If they're going to if they're going to do that, then there's going to be no qualms in taking a rating against Emmerdale every day and using that to beat the BBC with, which, you know, which seems unfair to me as well. So I just I just thought, you know, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me why they would put themselves in that position. Fair enough. One last comment then, and we'll end with this one uh, from Matt Cherry. And he has written, um, I would think that this would have been a lot worse news for EastEnders about a decade ago. The popularity of streaming has done a lot to weaken the concept of appointment television and people who love both soaps no longer need to choose. I think that's a nice way of ending it, uh, this little debate. But we'd love to know what you guys think and what your comments are. Comment below if you're watching this on YouTube or you can get in touch with us in the following methods. You can contact us on Twitter and Instagram at Walford Weekly. You can find us on Facebook at Walford Weekly Podcast. On YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell to get notifications about the spoiler videos. And you can listen to us on Apple, Podbean, Spotify or frankly any of your favourite podcast sites. Uh, email us at robwalfordweekly at gmail.com or sometimes at alexwalfordweekly at gmail.com. <laughs> Thank you very much for a wonderful sometimes. episode, Alex. Uh <laughs> Sometimes, now and again. Um, yes. Yeah, do let us know uh, what you think of the schedule changes and tell me how wrong I am by kicking off. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. We will see what happens. Um, I, for what it's worth, I'm very excited about East End's future because, you know, new producer is always exciting and we are heavily, yes. red, we are quickly rushing towards a climax of the Grey Storyline, which looks like it's going to be good because Simon Ashdown's back to write it and that always excites me when I see his name coming on the screen. So, yay. Ah, yes. Um, That's so, coming soon as well. Yeah. Yes. So we should look forward to that. And me and Alex are now going to discuss off camera whether we can really get drunk during a podcast. So until next week, it's goodbye from me. <laughs> yes, we can. Oh, and it's goodbye from me. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>